there. Thank you. And I thank the gods for providing me with such a strong man when I needed him. I'll admit that the sight of those runaway horses had me worried about you. Are you all right? Better. Oh, my legs are still quite weak. Why do you stare at me? Is it so strange that a girl couldn't manage those horses? Not in the least. I doubt if anyone could have controlled them. Then why stare? I was looking at you. It's very difficult to find a girl as beautiful as you are. Oh. You say it so very simply, as though you were speaking of a plant or an animal. I almost think you are sincere. I am sincere. I always speak the truth. Now I know you. You're Hercules of Thebes. They are waiting for you at Joko. They expect great accomplishments of you. I... By the gods, I forgot my rose. It'll be burnt to a charcoal by now. No, it seems all right. Would you like to taste it? Oh, no. Go on. Some more? Mm, no, that's enough. I'll begin where your lips ended. I can't decide whether you're sincere or just bold. Not bold, only hungry. Princess. Yes, you are Yole, daughter of Pelias, king of Joko. The royal standard on the chariot told me your name. Here, let me do it. I can work faster than you. Take your time. I'm in no hurry to return to the city that I detest. That's an odd welcome for a stranger to Joko. If I were you, I wouldn't go. I was invited by your father. That isn't true. You're the one who offered to go there and teach my brother the arts of war. Isn't that the same thing? No. You were wrong in coming to Joko. I'm sure you heard the story of my family. I know the story of Joko. But how can you remember what happened? I was only a child. And the memory of the past are like clouds that come and go with the wind. But I do recall that I'd been happy that day. We were returning from the hunt. Our host for the day had been my uncle Ezen, who at that time was the king of Joko. He had wanted his son Jason to ride in his chariot with my brother Ephesus, my father and me. At our side rode the captain of the escort, Kironi, who the day before had had an argument with the king, though we didn't know what it was. In the woods, we saw a platoon of soldiers coming toward us. With them, a man in chains. My uncle stopped the chariot. I tried to see the face of the prisoner, but I didn't succeed, for he was kneeling with his head bent very low. The king murmured something in my father's ear, and he got down from the chariot and went to talk to the officer of the platoon. What's the man done? He killed a woman and robbed her of what little money she had. A murderer, then. Murderer. That was the only word I was able to make out of the brief conversation that followed. But I knew then that the man must be condemned to death. My father came back to the chariot and whispered something to my uncle. The king rejected his words. Then we were off again. For Ezen was a good king, but inflexible and fair in his justice. The thought of the prisoner's death began to sadden me like a bad omen. A strong wind was beginning to blow the trees in the woods. And by the time we reached Joko, the sky was overcast, 
and the gale had increased in fury. The people who always came to welcome their king were hiding in their homes, and the great square was deserted. With the coming of night, the sense of anguish became even stronger in me. But my cousin Jason's invitation to go and see the Golden Fleece made me forget my fears. We waited until the king and his guards were far away. Then Jason, Ephesus, and I stole into the throne room. Very excited to see and to touch that which the people considered to be the royal symbol. For us, it was more important than the scepter or the crown. It seemed to give off a mysterious presence. It seemed to vibrate. And to touch it made us tremble. This was the last time I saw Jason. And I remember his irritation when he saw Peter seated on the throne. Later that night, my sleep was filled with nightmares. The memory of what happened in the woods would not leave me. Again and again, I pictured what should have been the end of that terrible story. The condemned man came to the place of execution. The executioner advanced towards him, grasping his axe. He lifted it. But with my scream, I heard other screams echoing from the farthest end of the palace. My terror was even greater when I noticed that my nurse's bed was empty. Out of my mind with fear, I ran to the throne room. They killed the king! They I could barely see the body of the king among the clamor and the confusion. My father, petrified, was there staring at his brother's blood. Then he turned, and a look of fear crossed his face, for the stand behind the throne was empty. The golden fleece was gone. But the rage of Peleus was wasted, for Jason and Chironi had disappeared, and more important, the golden fleece was missing. So that was why Caroni was accused of killing the king and taking Jason and the Golden Fleece away with him. Yes. And for what reason? For revenge. You don't believe that, do you? What's the difference? That's what the people say. But there are also those who say it wasn't Caroni who murdered the king of Jolko. That's not true. Then if it isn't true, why do you shout? Yes. At Jolko, they talk about my father. They whispered that he killed his own brother to seize the throne. But isn't that a ridiculous thought? You know, reigning without the Golden Fleece is almost impossible. And the people invent all sorts of lies. But my father does not deserve to be suspected. It's only right that you should think so. What a fool I've been. I should remember that you were Caroni's best friend. You two have come to harm us, to make me suffer. Come. I'll go with you. Wait. I'm sorry I'm not much good as a carpenter, but we can both ride to Joko on my horse. Please, Yoli. It's getting late. There's hatred in your eyes. You were raised in an unhappy home among unpleasant surroundings without a friend. But now I'll watch over you. I'll protect you. I swear it. Light dissolves darkness. As water extinguishes fire, soon a man will come who is bent on your destruction. Beware of him with a single sandal. The dream is always the same. A man with a single sandal. Beware of this man. 
But why does he hate me so much? As yet, he is unaware of this hate. Oh, Father, I never believed in oracles, and that Sybil sounds worse than Destiny any woman. Destiny knows your name well. Death sleeps in your bed beside what you. What are you saying? Which? I can say no more. This is all the gods have revealed to <coughs> No. No. We must respect the prophecy, the gods, and those who speak for them. I will give the order that anyone coming to Jolko wearing one sandal will be put to death immediately. You! Who are you? Hercules, whom you have called to Jolko. Leave us, Sybil. Enter, Hercules of Thebes. Welcome to Jorko. They say you're a demigod. Can you make yourself invisible? Be quiet, Ephesus. He saved my life. Good for him. He's gotten off to a good start. Listen to what I have to say to Hercules, because it concerns all of you. With his help, I'll strengthen the throne of Jolko. With his guidance, I'll make a man of you worthy to reign. Then, then I'll leave you all power, honor, and glory. Father. I can hardly wait for that day to come. The throne seems to me nothing more than a beggar's bench, humble and futile. Father, you've had too much to drink. And with good reason. But I've been silent too long. Hercules has a willing arm and an open mind. And we badly need his help because I'm tired. Show me you are sincere, and I will make you my chief counselor. Goodbye until tomorrow, my friend. Wait, who can assure me that you are really Hercules of Thebes? I can't, Father. He tamed my horses. They were wild with fright. He saved my life. Certainly. Certainly, I believe you. But I can't depend upon the eyes of a woman. What are you trying to say? Nothing. You're too young to understand. Well, then. Wait, Father. Go ahead. Show us how strong you are. You may go. Yole will show you to your rooms. Until tomorrow, Peleus. You've been too generous with him. You've let yourself be charmed, just like your daughter. And you hate him because you're weak and impulsive. Hercules is your guarantee. His strong arms will restrain Argo, Laertes, Tifi, the twins, and all the other princes who want the throne of Jolko. The throne that is your son. Only yours. You'll sleep here. The sun rises on the other side, so you'll be able to sleep in the morning. Thank you, Yoli. Until tomorrow. Mine is a strange family. Don't you think so? It's much too soon to judge them. Can't you smile, Hercules? I'm being cautious. You're right. And if you choose, I'm willing to release you from your promise. Never. <laughs> if I ignore your brother's insolence, if I remain in Jolko, it's only because of you. You've already forgotten about Kironi. Look, that was his room. In that room, the king was killed. And Jason slept in there. Only Keroni could have killed my uncle. He and no one else. I'm sure you mean well, Yoli. And I'm also sure you're mistaken. What do you want now, Eurystheus? Nothing. But you have made a serious mistake. No. Hercules will make of my son the man I failed to be. Hercules was Chironi's favorite student. And they were close friends. Too many years have gone by. Hercules is honest. And honesty always finds the truth, even after many years. And he won't rest until he clears Chironi's name. He might find something else in its place. Love, perhaps. 
Goldie! If it happens, I won't do anything to hinder it. Your daughter will regret it. Like you. Of course, of course. Go out. Yes, I'm going. I'll fade back into the shadows. That's my reward for all these years of faithfulness. And the gold? Gold? Gold glitters in the sun. But in the shadows, it turns dark. Red, like spilled blood. I'm going, but I'll return, and you'll be the one to call me. Give up the games. Your heart can't stand the strain. I know it, Esculapius, but I should like to finish this marathon. Take him away. But I've been training for months. Go. The disease of fanaticism is spreading among the youth of Yolko, and with it, the myth of physical strength. They become careless about their studies for the glory of the arena, isn't it so, Orpheus? Yes, Laertes. Unfortunately, poetry declines. It won't be long before my lyre sings only of heroic deeds and songs of battle. Look, Tifi, Argo is coming. She seems to be angry. You two here in the arena, are you also blinded by the new star? <laughs> in Joko, they also speak of nothing but Hercules. He's conquered the hearts of our sons. I think that at a signal from him, they'd stand by to fight against us. Don't worry. You can tell from his eyes that he's pure as sunlight, and his strength is a challenge to all evil. Look at him, between Castor and Pollux. Deceit does not go with a man of such quality. Good jump. Very well done. Be careful, though. You must go slowly if you want to become a champion. I wanted you to notice me. I want to become like you, Hercules. And I'm sure you'll succeed if you have a strong will. My father says that you're only a man of strength, but I know that you place your strength at the service of intelligence. And so I do. All right. If you stay by me, I'll teach you how to fight, but not only with your arms. And someday, friends and enemies will know you as the wise one. But who? You must be great. Oh, it's a thief! Get out of his way! Oh! I might have known it was him. Forgive us, but we must be going. Farewell, Hercules. Until tomorrow. Get a bow. The sun is already high. You sleep too much. You don't really expect me to give up the pleasure of being entertained by my slave girls just because the great Hercules is waiting for me. Here. No. From where you're standing. I never had the honor of such a distinguished audience. The distance was absurd. You have done it on purpose to disgrace me in front of them. Do you think so? That's the minimum distance in which the bow is used. If the enemy is close, you use a sword or the lance. And remember that it is not a question of strength. With a little intelligence, even a boy like this one can hit the center from the far end of the field. Go ahead. Prove it to me if you can. Show me that you haven't got muscles in your head as well. Follow me. What is he going to do? Be quiet. Watch this. Now aim carefully. And most important, concentrate. You must calculate the intensity of the wind. Look at the top of those trees. They will give you the proper angle to incline your bow. The arrow must travel parallel to your left arm, perfectly straight, like this. All right.
That's it. Pull another two inches. I can't. You must do it. Come on. Another one. Shoot! Wonderful. Quite A perfect good. shot. Uh, well done. What's your name? Ulysses, son of Laertes. Remember what I'm going to tell you. Your destiny will be decided by an arrow. No one in all of Thessaly has ever beaten me in throwing the discus. Do you accept the challenge? Certainly. If Phoebus has chosen wisely, the heavy build of Hercules will be a point against him in this trial of skill. Let's wait and see. A throw of 137 feet. That was an unusually long throw. It will be difficult for Hercules to beat that record. Don't be too sure. Right, Hercules, show us your style. How do you throw the discus in Thebes? With two hands? <laughs> the son of Jupiter. Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Friends in Jonko. Return to Thebes, Hercules. I promised I'd stay and help you. What good will that do you? If Phoebus will seek revenge because you made a fool of him. You know I couldn't leave you. And I'm sure I couldn't live without you, Hercules. Oh, I was so afraid that you would leave me. And I imagined myself in that sad palace, alone again, without a friend. Summer, cruel as the hailstones on young wheat. She only prefers the young, the children and the women. Stay in your homes or you will be next. He's right. We must kill the lion. Who will go after him? What has happened? The lion has returned. Where were they? In the valley of Godoro, a few miles from town. Yeah. Don't go, Hercules. performance for anything in the Go world. Go away! I want to see how you kill a lion now that you have mastered the discus. Your tongue is much faster than your hand. You'll find out it's not true. Go back. I'm responsible for your life. You are also responsible for disgracing me in front of my people. And I swear by the gods that if the lion spares your life, my sword will split your skull. Thank <laughs> you. 
great Jupiter. Was this my destiny? Your empty chariot arrived in Jolkal as a messenger of death. Yes, but I'm not the victim, as you can see. You may still become one. I gave you warning, Peleus. When Hercules came, doom would settle within these walls. My son is dead. Defeated. No use crying now. You must think of revenge. Revenge myself against Hercules. How can I make him suffer as I suffer? Ask him to redeem himself. Ask him. Then you'll have the pleasure of seeing Hercules stripped of his strength. King Peleus, Hercules has arrived. to go after the lion. If you hadn't acted in haste, my son would be alive. Now the lion is gone, and the fathers and husbands who cry over their dead feel that their anger has lessened with their sorrow. But who will appease my anger? You, chasing your glory, have brought deep sorrow to my house. You'll pay for it by fighting the Cretan bull. Go fight with him. Beast against beast. This is the redemption I'm asking of you. May there be no peace for you. May the curse of the gods be upon you. May the hatred of men persecute you until you have paid for the blood of Ephesus. I don't want to go against your father's word, because I know he is suffering. But his order is unjust, as are his bitter accusations. Of course. Hercules must only obey the gods. He doesn't understand the sufferings of mortals. Listen to me, Yon. Go away! Why did Ephesus have to die? Answer me, Sybil. I don't understand. A man I could crush with one hand gives me an order. A woman humiliates me. It wasn't your fault, Hercules. Ephesus died because Jolka's destiny must be accomplished. Go find the Cretan bull and fight with him. In this fight against the bull, your fate will be decided. I'm tired of being set out to do the bidding of all the gods. I'm no puppet, not even for the great Jupiter. What do you want to do then? Rebel against the gods? Listen to me. 
the events of the past few days. Yole, the punishment of Peleus, have stirred within me conflicting emotions. But there's something left in me that prevents me from feeling love or hate. It's your immortality, Hercules. If immortality must make me unhappy, then I don't want it. Beware, Hercules. It's very easy to renounce immortality, but you have to consider your old age, and you must think of death. You would be like the other men, defenseless, seized by fear, pain, and sorrow. But I want to love like other men, and to fight like them. I want to have a family, and see my children grow up. Enough, Hercules, as you choose. From this day on, you shall have to face all the ordeals reserved by your destiny only with your mortal strength. You may win your battles or go down in defeat. Kill others or be killed. I accept. It will be a challenge to fight like men. Follow your destiny then. But don't ask for mercy. The gods have no use for the stubbornness of men. I thank thee, Jupiter, for having listened to me. Now I have battles to win. The woman I love to conquer for my own. And my destiny to fulfill. My destiny to fulfill. Kirone, who are you? How do you know Kirone? Hercules. The bull has gored me. My time has come. And yet the gods have been generous, for you are here. Be quiet. Don't talk. No, I must, because I feel death is very close. Listen to me, Jason. He is the son of Eason, the heir of Jorko. Kirone saved my life when the king was killed. He brought me here when I was only a child. He taught me knowledge in the arts of war, as a father would. He must recapture what is rightfully his. He must sit on the throne of Jolko. The time has come. And now you shall teach him in my name the way of justice. You shall return to Jolko with Jason and the Golden Fleece. Hercules, 
my beloved pupil of happier times. The Golden Fleece is not here. The ship on which little Jason and I managed to make our escape from Cholco that night was forced by a strong wind against the coast of the Colchides. The people there wanted to kill Chironi and me. To keep them from seizing the Golden Fleece, Chironi hid it among the branches of a huge oak tree. Then, somehow, we managed to escape and resumed our journey. You know who killed Eason. You were there. I can't tell you. Jason must regain his throne without revenge. This I have told you. And this he has promised. Who killed Eason? Tell me. You'll find the answer with the Golden Fleece. <laughs> Over there. The city of Jolko is just behind those hills. It can't be more than a half a day's ride. Let's go. No, Jason. You're wrong in torturing yourself, for we'll never know who killed your father now that Kironi is dead. How many times I tried to get the truth from him, but he wouldn't talk about it. He could read my thoughts. He felt my desire for revenge. And I can see by the look in your eyes that your desire to kill is stronger than the advice of Girona. It's true. The thought of revenge dominates my mind. But the assassin has no face and no name. I'll buy a better fare. Besides, I haven't got time to chase it. So, I was saved by Caroni and hidden in a cave, waiting for time and the gods 
to help me return to my native land without fearing those who killed my father. I'm willing to believe you, my boy. But I hope you'll understand my position. I need proof. It is possible that you are telling me the truth, but I cannot give up my throne and the government of this city to the first stranger who comes and claims to be my nephew. Now you say that Kirona is dead and that the Golden Fleece is really in the Kolka days, a land very far away, a long and impossible journey. Therefore, you might have come here only to cheat me. I heard what Kironi said myself. There is nothing you can say that will alter my way of thinking. You've already brought enough sorrow to my house. You also want to seize my throne? I won't, but someone else might. King Peleus, with your permission, I think that arguing is a waste of time. If what this young man says is true, the gods will tell us. The Colchides are far away, but I think it's worthwhile risking a journey there to solve the mystery of King Eason's death. The Colchides are a fabulous land and full of mystery. And the seas surrounding them are very dangerous. Who knows? Perhaps this was the adventure for which Argo's ship was destined by the gods. This quest will give the poet something to write about in the years to come. Find the Golden Fleece, or disappear in the silence of death. Then the people shall know that the throne of Jolko is upright and lawful. We shall go there and return with the truth, King Peleus. Orpheus is right. I am ready to leave. I'm with you. Me too. I'll go along. And we're with them. As you wish. Your decision is that of the gods. But I shall not wait a lifetime. No, I'll remain here in doubt for the few years I have left. You have three months' time, not one day more. Farewell. You can count on our help. What he says is true. We shall not fail. Your gaze is sincere. Of course. It's worth trying. Have you heard about Ulysses? No. You will now, because it's me. And I'll be of great help, my friend. <laughs> Yoli. What is it you want? Don't think I'm being hostile to your family. Really? Then what am I to believe? I'm only searching for the truth. Truth? From the very beginning, you knew what truth you wanted to uncover. Believe me, Yoli. I tell you this because I love you. What are you waiting for? Didn't you hear what Orpheus said? Now you have another job to do. More glory for you. Go with the one who calls himself Jason. Win victories for yourself and more grief for me. Do you recall what you told me the first day? That you weren't happy because of the strange mystery surrounding your father's throne. So it's our destiny to search out the truth. No, Hercules. Your destiny is not mine. Steve, I'm sure of it. They'll come back with the Golden Fleece. They will accuse me. They'll kill me. And they'll kill you, whose only fault is being my daughter. When I saw that man without a sandal. Enough, Peleus. You can't help yourself by despairing. What you suggest? Speak up! If you know a way out of this, I'm ready to listen. Your son is dead. And if Jason doesn't return, your daughter, Yoli, will not be able to rule Thessaly alone. No! You shall never have your day. Never. The Argonaut ship is sailing tomorrow. No one knows me. You have tonight to think it over. Goodbye. because you're jealous. And when your jealousy is passed, you end up suffering because she bosses you around. <laughs> the 
here comes the wind. Ready with the sails. Stay at sea. This will be the calendar. And knots for every day. What has happened to you? You don't smile anymore, Yoni. You make us all sad. Don't worry, he'll return. Leave me alone. Be that you two are anxious to see my fate accomplished? Yes, Father. King or no king, as long as you are happy. Even if that boy is, Jason. You told me yourself once. The throne is a burden. What we really need is peace and happiness. It's too late for happiness, my child. At least for me. But with the help of the gods and Hercules... Don't he... say that! No. No, Yoli. I'd like to wipe him out of your mind. From now on, we drink water. But wine is within arm's reach. We could swim. That land's not far. Nah. We won't touch land until we reach our destination.
can't stand to be mistrusted, and I'll handle this ship my own way. I won't give up my quest for the police. And if any of you have lost faith in the cause or in the worthiness of my ship, I'll gladly put you ashore at the nearest island. You can't just leave us on any island. You've got to return us to Choco. I don't know who's spreading this dissension among you, but I find it hard to believe that a mere storm could force you to the point of mutiny. Our provisions are at the bottom of the sea. Our waters turn stale. All the gods are against this journey. He's right. Well, Argo, what's your decision? He's not the one to decide. We shall. You won't, scared dogs. You can't even think straight. But understand this, whoever mutinies now is a traitor. Watch out, Argo. We don't like the ring of your words. What's going on here? Tell me. Let go of me. I'll let you go when I'm ready. Take your hands off me. How would you like to take a look at the provisions at the bottom of a sea? No, Hercules. No! Oh. Hold it now and listen to me, all of you who had a hand in planning this mutiny. We've had a storm. All right, since when do men go to sea only in fair weather? What's wrong with you? Have you lost your nerve? Come on, speak up. Who started this trouble? All right, back to the oars. We'll reach shore soon. Get up! Just a minute. Where do you come from? The country near Jolko. Is this your first time at sea? First and last, I hope. Why is that? I'm not a man of muscle. I see you like a joke. It's the only way I know of telling the truth. All right. If you are so anxious to show off, I'll give you a much better opportunity. In a little while, we are going ashore to look for provisions. You remain here in charge of the crew and watch them. Me? Yes, you. You are the one who started the trouble on this ship. And you'll pay with your life if any of the crew are missing when I return. Wouldn't I be more use ashore? No! You'll stay right here. And at the first sign of trouble, I'll hang you from the mast. I lose you, command. Served you right, eh? Come on, get moving. Get back to work. See you soon. Good luck, Andy. Good luck. Good luck. I think it would be better if we go this way first. Have you come to our island? We thought the island was deserted. We landed because we need water and provisions. But I assure you we come in peace. Put down your weapons and follow me. Our queen will decide about that. Why not? This might prove interesting. Follow me. What's your name? Where's your queen? Who would have thought that at 60 I would embark on such a fantastic adventure? Oh, Venus, I thank you. And I thought this was just a legend, another tale invented by the poets. If I'm dreaming, I hope I never wake up. What do you mean? Who are they? 
They are the Amazons, my friend. This country is inhabited by females, only females. You know, like in a beehive. I hope we don't end up like the drones. The drones? Yes, the male bees. The females kill them after mating. Look! Only men! Believe this, the Phoenician landed, loved, and died here. Huh? Is that clear? Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so different? The lives of all men hang by threads. We are wrong in concerning ourselves. Let's enjoy life. Let tomorrow take care of itself. <laughs> Hail, my queen. I hope you'll forgive us for landing on this island, but with your help, we'll be on our way in a few days. We have no intention of disturbing your peaceful life and your solitude. Don't laugh about our loneliness. Yes, we are a tribe of females. There have been no men on this island for a very long time. Listen. The men were all destroyed years ago when the volcano erupted. And now we are alone. Think what that means to a stranger. And you'll share our sorrow. Forgive my indiscretion. I am called Jason. And this is Argo, Pollux, Laertes, Castor, and Esculapius. We were sailing to the Colchides, but a storm forced us to throw our provisions overboard, and we were unable you to. You look sincere. I believe you. Treat these men as our guests. They are welcome to all of our provisions and to our wine. You see? Things are looking up. What did I tell you? I don't know your name yet. My name is Antea. Anything else? I want to know if you've been completely truthful with us. Yes. The story of the volcano that killed all the men on this island. I also heard about it from Laertes on our way here. But uh, according to him, it took place over a hundred years ago. And you wondered how a race of only women could have survived alone. Follow me. Let me teach you to swim. Or do you already know? When I finally lowered the sails, it was too late. It's how old you feel that counts, not the number of years you have. Have some, it's good for you. Several years after the eruption, some seafaring men arrived here. The women welcomed them with open arms. But for our hospitality, we were repaid by violence and thievery. It taught us a lesson. And the women that survived were quick to learn the use of arms. From that day on, whenever men landed here, we made sure that they wouldn't harm by us by... loving and then killing them. It gave us a feeling of superiority. As our older women passed on, the younger girls grew up and were trained to take their place, proud and satisfied to be the only inhabitants of this island. Didn't they ever fall in love? Love is a word that doesn't exist here. We but haven't used it for countless years. <laughs> Why do you laugh? You are an intelligent woman. You are beautiful and healthy. You can't believe what you are saying. I know men are all alike. They don't love women. They desire them. And the gods who shape the destiny of men have put us here to punish them. Not all men are alike. Some of them have genuine feelings. They desire women when they love them. I, I could never possess a woman unless I loved her. Would you be willing to risk death to possess a woman of this island? But... 
With him here, I'm quite prepared to take that risk. One more. <laughs> Why did we have to meet? What strange wind brought us here? I had thought of another destiny. A lesser destiny? No. You're brave. You're ambitious. That's why I like you. Can't we escape from here? Go away, the two of us together. To live like simple mortals. To love and suffer. That way, your love for me would last a very short time. No. Don't deceive yourself. We are different. I won't go, then. I'll never leave you. My heart is now tied to this island. The smell of your hair, your haunting smile, the sound of your voice. I couldn't live without you. I'd give ten years of my life to solve this mystery. Use your brains. There's no mystery. They live a grand life ashore, and we rot here. Hercules, Ulysses, and Orpheus are always on the ship, <laughs> but the others are gone been missing for the past 10 days. And by now, we have enough provisions. But you should also consider my feelings for you. Your feelings are no concern of ours. The term has expired a long time ago. I had warned you, Anthea. The law is the law. It must apply to you as well as the others. Those men must be put to death. Jason will be the first. They must not live to see the sunrise. So you act quickly before dawn. <laughs> What's the matter? If you had to put someone to sleep, what would you give him? What a question to ask someone who has been asleep. Come on, wake up. Just for a moment, it's important. What's more important than sleep? Nothing. What can you take to fall asleep? Crushed poppy seeds mixed with wine. And whoever drinks it becomes happy and sleepy at the same time. Poppies like these? Yeah. Thank you. Ulysses. Well, I hope. 
hope they drink enough. Let's go. Now, where are those three going? There's something funny going on. It's all right for them to sneak away and see the Amazons while we have to stay on board the ship like slaves. I've had enough of this. And regular. I've had enough. Keep quiet, all of you. I'm trying to get some sleep. Intoxicating. You look like two women instead of one. Tell me about your twin. Why does she have sad eyes while yours are smiling? Come on, tell me. In fact, most of you look unhappy tonight. It's a party, not a wake. <laughs> <laughs> You know, many times I ask myself, where shall I be two years from now? <laughs> Strange that all of a sudden I can't stay awake. Don't go away. Dance some more. <laughs> you kept away from me. What's happened? Nothing, really. It's just that my heart has reached the crossroads of destiny. Before you came, my life was quite simple. Until that day, not a single one of the men that fate brought to my island I considered worthy to love a queen. Then, you came in your arms. I found I was not a queen, but only a woman. How did you manage to pour the seeds in the wine? I imitated the mating call of a wolf, so the women rushed out with their weapons. I slipped inside and drugged their wine. The wolf's mating call? Yes, like this. Oh! Hey. I, I remember I used to know someone who could imitate the mating call of a wolf. Why, yes, Ulysses. Maybe it's Ulysses imitating the wolf. Or it's the wolf imitating Ulysses.
You carry Esculapius. He's lighter. And remember to keep your eyes open. Can you smell them? It's enough to make your head spin. I'd rather have my head spin for girls than Me wine. too. I hope I get enough to last for a long time. <laughs> And you're not only talking of wine. Why not? We're still young. Did you see the girls on the cliff yesterday? Oh, <laughs> where do you think you're going? Who gave you permission to come ashore? Speak up. Let's get out of here. Don't try that. And I'm glad you showed up after all. I've got a little job for you. Come with me. If you value your health, you'd better do it. Oh. Have you had enough? Are you ready to go to work? Then get over there. Ulysses, take the tiller. I've decided to go ahead. What? what? Well, what are you waiting for? Me? Uh, I have a very sick friend I must visit. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs>
this be the Colcades. The fleece is near us. Why do they go ashore so early? Couldn't they wait for daylight? They could not keep Jason from going. The others follow. forgive him for what he did, but may they persecute and curse him if he harms my son. I commit Jason into your hands, O oh gods, and I ask of you to free his thoughts from revenge, for no more blood must be shed because of my death.
Yours was the deed of a king. We acknowledge you as sovereign of Jolko. What is written on the back of the Golden Fleece? On whom will our vengeance fall? On no one. It was the last request of the king. It is his will. He pities those who take revenge. You'll return this to Jalko, where you place the Golden Fleece behind the throne. Oh, King, it's wise to forgive. But you'd be wiser to look deep into the eyes of the man you've forgiven. I follow only what my father commands and my conscience dictates. I must do it. I'll take the responsibility. to be tricked like children. But no one went ashore. Just a moment. Where is he? Where's Eurystheus? He's missing. It must be he. Now the people of Jalka will believe we are lying. It's the end of us. No, not yet. I shall go ashore. I shall find the fleece. The people of Jolko will have their rights. I swear by the gods. And you, you wait for my signal. I'll wave a torch. So you've stolen the fleece, Eurystheus. I wouldn't soil my hands with your foul blood. As for you, you're an old man who inspires only pity and disgust. Beware of Jason. Jason is king. Jason will judge you. Don't forget that we'll fight. You will never beat Jason. Don't be too sure because the Golden Fleece is ours now. That's enough. Everybody will know you're thieves. What is this for? You're not to leave your room. The king's orders. Orders, you say? Tell me, where is Hercules? We know nothing about it. But that's ridiculous, bolting us in this way. Don't be worried, Jolie. Now that Jason's here, they'll decide who the king of Jolko is. Jolie! Hercules! In there, locked up. Watch the sentry. Hercules. Hercules. The door does not open from the inside. We are trapped in here like he is. The gods have abandoned us. No, he's still alive. You report that your journey has been successful. That you found the Colchides. And in the Colchides you found the Golden Fleece. May I look at it? Where is Hercules? 
What has Hercules got to do with it? If I give up my throne, I must have your proof. Not Hercules. Tell me, I demand it. You already assume the tone of a king. But now you dare to issue commands. Bring to me the fleece, and I will give you the throne. But I promise that if I find you have lied to me, you will be condemned and put to death, all of you. I told you, the fleece has been stolen. You can ask your own men here. They're your partners if it comes to that. I want the fleece now. The fleece is your show to me. But I know you can't, because you're an imposter and your men are traitors. Arrest them all. Prisoners, never panic. sometimes make mistakes, and now mine have caught up with me. I've done so, so badly. Jason should reign in Jalco. He may have mercy on my memory. Tell me about everything now. You mustn't lie any longer. Oh, my dear, it's useless. The poison's working well. Poison? Father! You, you mustn't regret anything, daughter. Go away with Hercules. He's a good man. I must join a fetus. Now, God's take me to the land of shadows. May I be forgiven. <laughs>
now there is justice, and the clouds over Joko pass away. Out of great sorrow and spilled blood, forces of good are sometimes born. Hercules and Yole are leaving now to find a new happiness. They will seek amongst the race of men, where justice and peace will be with them again. Farewell, Hercules. Farewell, Yole. Life awaits you, with all its glory and all its shadows. But even through the most difficult tasks the gods may prepare for you, you'll have each other to the end of time.